Hi all, I have another amazing game to show you of Leela Chess. This is in the mighty TSEC Season 14 Division 1. So we have here Fritz playing white, e4, the opening book given to both is in the Sicilian defense and is actually the topical Sveshnikov variation. So the World Chess Championship in 2018 had many Sveshnikov games. So here is the end of the book. We have Bishop G5, A6, the knight going back, B5. So threatening B4, pretty standard stuff. Now white usually either plays knight D5 or bishop takes F6. These are the two main moves. Fritz chooses bishop takes f6 and now knight d5 f5 we have bishop d3 and now black plays bishop e6 so to be able to take on d5 on e takes white castles and now uh, Leela voluntarily gives up the light square bishop which has been played actually many times before e takes knight e7 but there is an element of a pawn sacrifice if white wants to take on b5, white can here, and white did, Fritz did. Black cannot possibly take this because of the check, and that's crushing. If the knight has to go there, then white is winning the exchange, and just a winning position. So that's to be avoided. Black's idea here is the pawn sack. So interesting dynamic already. So black has. Uh, a potentially nice dark square bishop without a counterpart. Of course, white does as well. But within this pawn structure here, you can see that the e5 square is handy to black. And knight g6 celebrates that as well as f4. We have king h1. And not bothering to castle here, just queen g5 going as if for a direct attack on g2, potentially with the g-file. So a really fun, dynamic, aggressive play f3 is played now you might think white is volunteering black to have a nice pawn wedge yes that does seem to be the case here uh, maybe it wasn't totally uh, essential possibly a move like a4 has some influence with things like rook a3 later on the king side for example like this uh, might not be <laughs> such a bad idea to try and defend with the third rank um, and um, but uh, there are resources for black like this and it looks really dangerous but there are always counter resources uh, so might, might be able to get a perpetual check for example and this is a fictional variation but okay a4 yeah is, is interesting but f3 yeah visually it gives Lula a nice pawn wedge after e3 so a protected past pawn and to be supported with f4 sometimes. Bishop d3, bishop e5, we have knight e2. And now f4 here. What was black actually threatening? If we play a move like a4, black might have been threatening. Bishop takes h2 here because after king takes knight f4, there's no adequate response for white in this position to defend, in fact. Rook g1 fails to queen h4 check mate. g3 fails to queen h6 check and then queen h3. White cannot defend g2 easily and on g takes uses the g file with decisive effect. So white has to be very careful in playing knight e2 to facilitate defensive resources. Now if bishop takes h2 is played this position is very different with g3 being possible with that knight on e2. So black actually played f4, sorry, after knight e2, black actually played f4 here. So we have that central pawn wedge, rook b1, rook g8, c3, knight h4, threatening mate. We have check, and now it's important for the king to not leave d7 unprotected, believe it or not, King e7 is played, keeping control of d7. It makes it very, very different if the king actually goes to f8 here. Very different. For example, rook g1, queen h5. Uh, here, knight f5, there's now queen d7. And white is uh, in a good way to defend here with the queen on d7. 
in fact looking at that h3 uh, another example here uh, this position this just have a variation of what we've seen if f takes then h3 and it's yeah it's pretty secure for white white has a big advantage so this is important to control actually d7 uh, we have rook g1 queen h6 now we have the threat basically is like to bring the rook in to hit the vulnerable h2 it looks as though h2 is the current achilles hill of white's position especially with this kind of central pawn wedge disconnecting the white pieces uh, so we have knight d4 here uh, on as an example of carnage a3 rook g5 before rook h5 with big ideas like knight takes f3 next it's horrible and also you might think okay just for fun let's look at this greedy move knight takes g2 here just to see the tactical elements of the position check and we see the loose piece on on the rook on b1 being tapped into so knight d4 is played now rook g5 so carrying on with the idea of rook h5 knight c6 check king f8 rook b e1 uh, so now we have rook h5 queen c2 being able to defend laterally to knight takes f3 because of g takes would be holding h2 uh, so otherwise this is very dangerous uh, if white had played knight takes e5 here knight f5 threatens mate in one and for example check this is hopeless for white because of rook takes h3 mating uh, so and if we look at rook takes e3 this is just desperate stuff uh, white is in big trouble so yeah white has to be very careful queen c2 rook e8 uh, we have now if this this is an important move as well if knight f5 h3 then white can actually defend here with queen h2 and this position is able to defend in fact with advantage to white so rook e8 we have rook gf1 knight f5 now so rook gf1 made sure this is not a mate threat but it's pretty terminal anyway uh it's really dangerous this or well, it's a mate in two threat because of the pawn on on e3 controlling the king's escape square so just bang and then check is would be mate so we have a concession from white losing the exchange now h3 white is going down the exchange off the check yep losing the exchange and now bishop f6 with another simple looking idea of playing the bishop into g3 and then maybe sacking on h3 later c4 this does weaken b2 and the diagonal queen g7 which seems to be taking time out to win the b2 pawn it does like g3 as well though King h1. Uh, so on b3 here, defending b2, bishop h4, this position is dangerous. White simply threatens queen g3 and rook h3. For example, a4, queen g3, with the threat of rook takes h3 check, and that will be mating. So big threats here. So white plays king h1, letting black nab, seemingly irrelevant actually, queen side pawn, seemingly. Uh, it does distract a defensive resource away to b1 though bishop bounces back and then we have bishop h4 and the bishop bounces back again strange uh episode here <laughs> commercial break before major operations if bishop had gone to g3 here uh queen c3 for example this position uh is okay it's uh black's got a nice advantage so we have bishop f6 Bishop d3, bishop h4, bishop e2, and now queen h6. And again, there's ideas of bishop g3 and rook takes h3. This is really dangerous stuff. Uh, white commits to g4. The problem with g4, it's uh, it's undeminable. This is an undeminable structure with both h5 and f5 later. And in fact, this feature of undermining is really celebrated. Uh, soon we'll see so bishop f2 queen f1 defending h3 queen f6 getting ready 
for h5 and the, the thing is with this undermining it means that you know this rook might later use the h file if that h pawn's missing black wants to get rid of these pawns basically to activate more pressure against the white position uh, but also you know simply queen h4 here it's the exchange up it's a very strong position anyway this is great for black anyway so queen f6 we have h5 and now the h pawns removed f takes on h takes in fact rook g8 is really dangerous for the h file generally don't even need to use this rook so here rook h8 you will know, evict the queen and this is just crun crunching of course this kind of thing so uh f takes we have f recheck so making use of the f4 square now sacrificing a pawn to threaten the nasty looking queen g3 bishop e2 and now f5 trying to activate even more pressure against the white king getting rid of this f pawn trying to dissolve white's pawn chain king h1 f takes g4 yeah white's position is crumbling rook d4 is played we have queen g3 and white cannot dare take on g4 here we have queen g2 if white takes on g4 with rook takes g4 rook takes and then there's the crushing e2 because the white queen is overloaded to protect g1 here and h3 either mates here so for example like that or queen g1 mate so queen g2 is played yeah so after queen g3 queen g2 g takes black is simply the exchange up still with absolutely winning position here yep pawn up as well as the exchange up so this is just pretty easy here the game actually ended here adjudicated as a win for black uh, the e pawn in particular makes black's task very easy if for example bishop d uh, if for example rook takes g3 well that was the move the final move if for example rook takes e2 knight d4 there's check and now we can push the e pawn ready for a check and then queening so for example check like a five check king g6 like g3 we can play here rook h1 check and then queen so yeah i'll take you back to the game end position so the game was ended here uh so a big win with the sicilian intervention card with the black pieces in division one of tsec you'd normally think well i would uh that the sicilian intervention card is a very tactical opening ideal for classical i say classical uh, uh, alpha beta style engines um but yeah leela seems to really celebrate the trump cards of the opening and made the game kind of look easy to play uh with with the attacking pressure winning the exchange and then it was quite easy after so made it look easy if you enjoyed this game video then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessbold.net you can play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis in advance of these games from the improved menu, learn from the masters, YouTube order button. Comments, questions, donations, like, share, subscribe to the notification bell, really appreciated. And also the new Teespring, Teespring t-shirt store in the description for form pawns and other chess t-shirts. Okay, thanks very much.